let's talk about the various earliest members of our own genus, the genus Homo. We're here talking about early members of the genus Homo. If we want to look on our tree, we're talking about these species, primarily Homo habilis and Homo rudolphensis. But first, let's talk about what it even means to put a species in the genus Homo. What are the characteristics we're looking for if we want to call it Homo rather than Australopithecus? This is kind of a big debate. The things we see, or the criteria that people generally use to put something in the genus Homo, is a slightly larger brain, usually of at least 600 cubic centimeters. Um, also, tool use. Uh, specifically or classically, this is the Oldowan tool culture, though more recent finds are pushing back stone tool culture, so we can't really use this one anymore. But this is what we used to use. We're also generally seeing smaller teeth, especially smaller molars. So even though Australopithecus didn't have quite as big teeth as Paranthropus, we were seeing smaller teeth in genus Homo in general, and we're also seeing more advanced bipedality. So let's talk about some of these early Homo species we're seeing. Um, generally, we're finding them in sub-Saharan Africa, and they are in closed woodland to open grassland environments. So a little bit open, but still, you know, some trees going on. Um, here is some of what we find. Um, Homo habilis is one of the most uh, famous specimens here. So it was first discovered in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Um, and here is OH7. So we have a partial skull and then a hand. We also have OH8, which is a foot, um, so we can look at them here. Um, so here is OH7, a little bit of our hand there. We have that mandible, um, probably a juvenile mandible. Um, and then we have OH8, this foot. Um, OH8, like, yeah, it's partial, but look at those metatarsals. Very robust, very similar to ours. Um, also, look at that big toe. It is super in line. That is adducted. That is very similar to our foot. We also see very human-like midfoot joints in the middle of the foot there. Um, the ankle is a little bit more primitive, but everything else is more derived than what we've been seeing before it. Um, Homo habilis, um, we of course have found a few more specimens than just that one. So we think it's about two, two to one and a half million years ago in both East and South Africa. In general, we are seeing some reduced prognathism, <laughs> reduced prognathism a rounder cranium, um, slightly increased brain size. Um, but let's look at some of these different specimens you see. So here we have a slightly smaller guy and then a slightly larger guy. So what's going on here? So you might notice there are a few shape differences. So the smaller guy, you know, his brain's a little bit smaller. His teeth is a little bit smaller. The brain case is, you know, a little bit smaller too. Um, his brow ridges are actually larger relatively um, and his face is a tiny bit more prognathic. This larger guy here, much larger brain, and his face is actually super flat, so there isn't quite as much prognathism. Um, and the posterior teeth are a little bit larger, um, and though the brow ridges are actually a little bit smaller. So there are a couple differences we can find here. And the question here is, are these guys sexual dimorphism, or are they different species? And for a long time, this debate raged on without much conclusion because we really only had one example of the large morph. We had Canem ER 1470, and that was kind of it. Um, today, we do think they are um, different species. We call the smaller one Homo habilis and the larger one Homo rudolfensis because we found more. This was actually really exciting. I was a senior in college at the time, and it was really cool to see the field change right before my eyes. Because before this was published, like it was still really up in the air. And a lot of people thought like maybe it was just one polymorphic species. And then we got some new fossils and like, nope, probably two separate things. So here we are getting some more conclusive evidence that yes, we do have this flat face here. Um, and we're actually seeing two distinct different palette shapes. So we're seeing two distinctly different types of shapes, then yeah, they're probably two different things. So I highly recommend you go read this paper by Leakey et al. in Nature from 2012 to get a better idea of exactly why we think there are two different species running around at this time. Um, so we just talked about Homo habilis and Homo rhodophensis, but what's that? What's, what's going on there? Homo spa? When you see sp dot, that means it's a species. It's it's in Homo. 
that's what we can say. Um, we, we name this to things where we just don't have enough material and we're not confident enough about actually naming a species. So this right here, this is AL666, about two and a half million years ago, so slightly older than the other homo species we were talking about from Ethiopia. It's, it's a maxilla. We have some teeth. It's a little bit smaller than what we're seeing for Australopithecus. So we don't think it's Australopithecus, but there's not quite enough to go on to name it a specific species of Homo. And you know, I appreciate that they're not naming new species off of this, but it does mean we're not entirely sure what's going on when we only have fragmentary evidence like this. Um, so here's a paper by Villemoire et al. Um, from 2015. They have a few more examples of some early Homo stuff. Um, this one's from 2.8 million years ago, again from Ethiopia, but we're not quite sure what's going on, but we are pushing back the age of early Homo just a little bit here. Um, so we can look at some of this earliest Homo stuff, compare it to, you know, Australopithecus gari, Australopithecus afarensis. Um, so you can see we're seeing a little bit of that parabolic palate-shaped teeth are a little bit smaller relatively. And these are the reasons people are putting it in the genus Homo and not Australopithecus because we are seeing some differences. But again, we, we have a maxilla. There's just not much we can say. So, can you explain, how do we identify early members of genus Homo, and what species are there? <laughs>